Welcome to my channel. To those of you who've been here before, welcome back. Thank you for your continued support. Um, yeah, so this is my little platform where I turn struggling math students into math masters. I post videos Tuesdays and Thursdays, so be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification button if you want to know when I actually post any new videos. In this video, I am going to be looking at box and whisker plots. I'm going to be teaching you all you need to know. Okay, so how do you draw it? How do you interpret it? You know, um, yeah, just pretty much everything that has to do with box and whisker plots. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, so this is the second part of the data handling section that I'm looking at. Um, the first one we looked at just understanding what the process of data handling is and you know how what falls under interpreting the data and now we're going to look at the box and whisker plot now the box and whisker plot is an extension of the measures of dispersion so if you don't know what that is please go back to my previous video on data handling and have a look at that okay so box and whisker plot is one of those sections where I'm, i've received a lot of requests in the comment sections to make a video on this so i'm glad that i've actually been able to make time to do this for you guys um so essentially the box and whisker plot encompasses the following so it it is literally just a graph that graphically displays your five number summary now the five number summary is simply your minimum value, your quartile one, quartile two, quartile three, and your maximum value. So the box and whisker plot is just a drawing of those five numbers. Okay, so let's just quickly go into this and I'm going to explain to you that one, for this section, you must understand measure of dispersion. Second, you must know how to actually draw it. But the more important aspect for box and whisker plots is to be able to interpret it. So hopefully you were able to do all of that by the end of this video. Okay, so let's have a look at this, this one class. So let's say this is the marks that they received in a test. Class A has received in a test. Okay, so if we want to draw and box a whisker plot, we need to calculate the minimum or not we have to decipher what the minimum is quarter one two three and then what the maximum is so that's what we'll do so if i look at these class values i'll see okay what is my five number summary my first number is my minimum value right which is the 12. my maximum number is my greatest my largest number which is 90. take note these values are in ascending order and if you remember from my previous video measures of dispersion you always have to have your numbers in ascending order. Okay, then we go and we find what is the center value, so quartile 2, right? So that means we're literally moving and, and moving from the edges and then trying to find what the center is. Quartile 2 is the center because on the right side of it, there's five values, and on the left side of it, there's also five values. Okay, so that's our quartile 2, that's our center. Another word for your quartile 2 is the median. Okay. Now, the center of the first half is then your quartile 1. So, if I look there, that is 42. It's 2 on this side, 2 on that side. Take note, this has already been taken. Okay, so this is already our quartile 2, so we do not use it to calculate the center on the left side. The same situation on the right would be 78. And that's how we would have our... Once you have your 5 number summary, the box in with the plot really is very easy to plot. Okay, so let me show you how we would plot this. So, you will start with like an x-axis. Please take note, um, Great Wilds, that your axis on which you're going to draw your box and whisker plot always have to be spaced the same values apart. Like, there has to be a consistent unit here. So, as you can see here, each of these points are, e are, are increasing by 10. You can't have, because some students will have, like, a, they'll put 12 here and then they'll put 42 here. And they'll literally put the values down here in the same values that is given um, in the data, which obviously is not right. Okay, so when you're drawing a box and with skip plot, choose a scale that, has a con that will include all of your values. So in this case, 
10 to 90 makes sense because I've got 12 and 90 as my minimum and maximum values. Okay, that being said, we have drawn our x-axis and now we include our minimum value and our maximum value. Okay, these will be considered as our whiskers. Okay, the whisker part of the plot. Then we will have our quartile 2. Take note, 12 will obviously be between 10 and 20, 90 will be at the edge here. The quartile 2, which is 57, falls between 50 and 60. So that's where we place our quartile 2. Then we place our quartile 1 and our quartile 3. And this then creates the box. Okay, so we've got the box and we've got our whiskers and we just draw the lines. And that's your box and whisker plot. Okay, so that's how you draw the plot. So you always start, make sure you calculate all your five number summary, and then from your five number summary, you will then draw your uh, you will then um, draw your box and whisker plot. Now, this is all fine, this is sort of fairly simple, but how do we now interpret this? Okay, now I want you to understand that firstly our quartiles has divided our data into fours. And if I think of it in terms of percentage, then that means I've got 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%. Okay. Now, that being said, I want you to think about this. And I'm going to go through this a little bit slowly so that you can guys can make sure that you are following me. Okay. And repeat and go back if you don't understand this. Okay. Play this over and over until you get it. So if I look between 12 and 42, this area here is 25% of the data. So all of my data represents 100%. From the minimum to quartile 1, which is this area, represents the first 25% of my data. The second 25% is obviously this part, right? Which is this part. From the 42 to the 57, this box is then 25% of the data falls in this uh, range, right? Then from this 57 to 78, so from 57 to 78, this part is another 25% of the data. And then the last part, which is here from 78 to 90, is the next 25. So this is 25%, 25%, that gives me 50%. And then on this side, I've got 75%, um, sorry, another 25, which gives me 75, up until 100. Now, why am I telling you this? Because now, I'm gonna, now the interpretation will then make sense to you. So, let's look. Interpretation. 50% or half of the class got more than 57% for this test. Do you agree? If I look... More than half fifty percent of the class got more than fifty. So here's fifty-seven. Fifty-seven is the second quartile. So this twenty-five percent, twenty-five percent. This is fifty. So there's fifty of percent of the data on this side, and fifty percent of the data is on that side. So this is correct. Fifty percent of the class got greater than fifty-seven percent, because this entire group here constitutes fifty percent because of this twenty-five and that twenty-five. Okay, so this is how they will ask, they will ask you maybe to just give some um, interpretation uh, comments on specific data. And this is the kind of, this is the kind of um, thinking that you must have uh, to answer this question. Okay, so let's look at another one. 75% of the class got less than 78%. So you see here's quartile 3. This is 75% of the data up until there, because that's 25, 25, 25, got less then 78. Okay, next point of interpretation, 50% of the class got between 42 and 78%. So between 42 and 78%, we said each of this represents 25%, right? So this whole box here, between 42 and 78, will be 50% of the data. Okay, so do you see, I'm just showing you all the arrows here, the color represents where in the data this is referring to. So that you can just slow this down and go back if you sort of want to go through it um, in a little bit uh, slower pace. Okay, then 25% of the class got more than 78%. So you see here, this is the 25% here. 
So that's how you would interpret the data. Okay. Um, yeah. So let's try one more. Okay. Let's have a look at class B. So we're going to follow the same procedure now. We want to calculate the um, the box and whisker plot. We want actually want to plot it and then be able to interpret it. Okay. So again, we start with a five number summary, minimum, maximum, and then we go to the center. And if you have a look here, 53 and 67 both constitute as the center. So we have to divide it by two to get 60, right? Then, and now remember, 60 is now the middle. So if I want to calculate the center of the first half, I'm now going to include this 53, okay? So that means the center of this half is then 42, and the center of this one is then 81. Once I have my five number summary, I go and I make sure that I draw an x-axis that's got consistent um, interval between them, right? Then I have my minimum, my maximum, my quartal one, who seems to have, you know, wanted to be here long before we actually got to him. <laughs> and then quartal two and quartal three, right? And that gives us our box, right? And then we add our um, whiskers. Um, we connect the whiskers in the box. So the minimum again and the maximum creates our plot, um, our whiskers. And then the box here is then actually our um, box of the plot. <laughs> okay. And then we just join this. Okay. So again, fairly simple. We just have this consistent value um, timeline and then obviously plotting our five number summary. Now, interpretation. Again, 50% or half the class got now above 60. Because you see this box and this X section here, each of these counts 25%. So that's 25 and 25, 50% got above 60% for the test. So that remember, this is 50% of the class, not 50% for the test. You must remember the difference here. Okay, then 75% of the class got less than 81%. Okay, that you can see because we've got this. So even though this is a little section here, grade 12, this still represents 25%. This is 25%, is 50, and this is 75. So 75% got less than 81. Then 50% of the class got between 42 and 81. That's just the box, as the box section of this plot. And then lastly, 25% of the class got more than 81%. And that's how you will interpret the box and whisker plot. Okay, for those of you who have cried and moaned and <laughs> asked me to please make this video, I hope that I did this justice and I hope that you understand this. And if you have any questions, let me know. So I hope that video helped you. Um, if you liked it, give it, a, give, it, give it a thumbs up for me, please. And yeah, if you have any comments or questions, you know where to put it. All right, so thank you so much. And I will see you in the next video.